right? So keep that in mind, you adopters, uh, when you're looking at your human beings, you know, if this person gonna get into trouble a little bit later on. So what's the prevailing issue? You've heard all this, uh, what I've talked to you about so far, the prevailing issue is not the dog, the prevailing issue is the humans that are in the dog's life. And so again, I've, I've looked at some of your guys' adoption papers, that kind of stuff, it, it really is important what you guys are doing, you're doing a great job in realizing that the human is so important. Again, I've dealt with other rescues that don't, they deal mostly with the dog. And they're going, oh, the dog's just, just the, the, they just know the dog and what it has to do with the human. The human's the most important part. What kind of situation, do they have experience? That was a great one that Jeff told me last night, is that you really want to know what kind of experience these people have with dogs. Have they been around dogs before? Again, that, sometimes that can't be the end all be all, but that's really important to know what their experience is. A good dog, bad, right? So you have this great dog, um, and I'm gonna use a, 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 um, an example of when I was a canine, I was a canine trainer for Anaheim Police Department uh, while, uh, while I was working there. And uh, I should actually say skilled handler, not such bad, because it's gonna put this handler in a bad light and that's not what I'm trying to do. But I had a German Shepherd that I brought over, is about nine months old, this one we were talking about. We had about nine months old, I saw him in Canada, he was a fantastic dog, already doing things uh, mature adult dogs, police dogs would be doing. Just going way over the top on all the issues, searching dark buildings, going upstairs, going over slick floors. I would shoot off a gun, the dog wouldn't even flinch. The dog was outstanding. So I bought this dog, brought him back. I had some time before we had to find the handler for this dog, so I thought I'm gonna try an experiment. I came from a world where we use cattle prods and tasers to train dogs. That's how I was taught. We hit dogs with sticks until they bled, and that was the way that we were taught. That's where I came into as a handler. And uh, a taser is, is just a torturous tool, and the one time they used that on my dog, I was out. Uh, it was fine when we were doing it with other dogs, right? But until they do it to your dog, then you go, wait a minute, this dog doesn't need a taser. This dog doesn't need a cattle prod. So I went to my lieutenant and captain and said, we gotta change things, this is wrong, we shouldn't be doing this to dogs anymore. And I had uh, the fortunate um, situation where the planets were all lined up. They actually asked me to be the trainer. I went out all over the United States and the uh, different parts of the world and learned how to train dogs using a reward-based system. So I was gonna take what I learned and said, you know, on this dog, since I have time, I'm, never, I'm gonna only use a flat collar on this dog and I'm only gonna use a reward-based system to teach him how to police dog. I didn't know if I could do it, but because everybody said, you can't. And I trained this dog using only a toy. And I trained this dog to bite, I trained this dog to out, I trained this dog to release, I taught him to call off and to search buildings for bad guys. And he loved it. Did this dog not love being a police dog? This dog loved being a police dog. He's fantastic. So, that's not, I'm not telling you to say how great I am, but what happened was I gave this dog to the handler who came in who didn't have the experience that I had. Remember, I had traveled all over, I'd learned all these types of things. Given to this handler, all of a sudden this dog began to take advantage of this handler and began to do things not letting go, <laughs> which is really important for police work yeah. because that guy can't go to the jail with the dog connected to him. That's hard to get him <laughs> through the medical screen. Well, the dog's still attached. Well, wrap it up. I don't know what to do. So, um, but I, what I learned right away is that there's a difference and I did everything I could to teach this handler how to use a reward-based system. He just could not get the concept. So pretty soon that dog ended up, we changed it over to a pinch collar for that dog. That gave this handler power. Uh, the handler was also about half my size, so that's just something when a dog is strong and powerful, if they can beat you, they, they will learn to beat you really fast, and if you don't have the strength and the power, you know, the dog's just gonna get away with it. But the pinch, pinch collar made the difference. This made a great relationship between this dog and handler, and I'm telling you, just because the dog had a pinch collar on, it didn't change anything, that dog loved that handler. Because now the handler was able to be black and white, and clear and concise. Just because he didn't, couldn't do it with a toy doesn't mean that he necessarily is a bad handler, it's just with this dog, he didn't have the skills to keep up the reward-based system, the click and treat, the food reward, whatever it is you're using for your reward-based reward system. So an unskilled handler or a bad handler can make a good dog bad. And in the case of police work, that can be detrimental to the police department and the police officer, right? So on the adverse side, a good handler can make a bad dog good. I've had that experience. I had a dog in the police department. This dog had medical problems from the handler he was with before. The dog had so much stress going on in his life. The dog would scream at the door. When we try to give an announcement at the door to send the dog in, we have to say, police department, come in, we're gonna send the police dog to find you and bite you. If somebody's inside who say it's a clerk that came in to turn off the alarm because they forgot to, to set it properly, and they don't hear that announcement, they're gonna end up getting hurt, right? Well, this dog would scream so loud that you couldn't hear what they were saying. You could say, whatever it is, nobody in this place is gonna hear that announcement. So this dog had stress at the door, because that's why he was screaming. He was stressed from the handler. Well, we, uh, that handler un unfortunately did something and he got kicked out and then we replaced the handler for that dog. That dog has never been calmer. He's off all of his medication. He searches beautifully and they love each other and respect each other. 
And so in this case, we had a good handler come in with a dog that was very bad at, the, at that point. The dog even had slick floor problems, no more slick floor problems. They all went away with a good, good handler. So that just goes to tell you how much the human is a key to these things, these adoptions and the fostering of that kind of stuff, right? So being a good, respectful handler is really important.